So a very warm welcome to you all this afternoon for our parish in council meeting. Uh, we're recording it and we're going to post it on the website during the week. We decided not to Zoom because you, we don't have the professional Zoom and also we only got one or two people in the last couple of years uh, joining us through Zoom. So this is our sixth meeting of this format which we began in 2019 and the aim of this afternoon is to give a broad stroke uh, an overview of what's been going on in the parish since our last council meeting last February and a broad initial follow-up for the parish forum meetings that have happened uh, uh, during the Sunday Masses since October. As you can see from the agenda, it concerns all the key areas of parish life, a stopgap review into the various activities of parish throughout the year. The parish finances took centre stage this year, culminating uh, with our planned giving and stewardship campaign in September. Uh, and this was to ensure that we were able to finance our parish mission and evangelization for the future years uh, and to continue to service of care for all who need it. 2023 has been or was a year of great change and readjustment, particularly within our parish team. We said goodbye to Maggie, our parish secretary, and Krisha, our pastoral coordinator. And I spoke at our gathering last year about the wonderful contribution they made in their roles for the life of the parish. Robert Ewan became our new parish secretary at the end of January and he has been editing the parish uh, bulletin as well since February. So I thank him for all that he is doing. I don't, he's not, not here now. Okay. Uh, so to start with finance, because uh, specifically because we had our planned giving stewardship campaign in September and Betty, our chair, hopefully is she here yet? No, she's not here yet. Uh, will speak to us just in a bit more specific detail about that. But I just wanted to highlight it, the dedicated preparation and the incredible planning work undertaken by the Parish Finance Committee throughout 2023 for the planned giving and stewardship campaign. These things never just happen, and they take a lot of time. Zoom calls and proof readings, etc., that was a build-up from particularly from May to August especially. We followed the diocesan template campaign uh, and we were very grateful to the Westminster development team, their assistant director, Helen Bright, and her team, especially George Reynolds, who is the digital fundraising manager of the diocese. George supported the finance committee in the build-up to the three campaign weekends. He had just started his role at the beginning of September and there were 12 parishes within the diocese uh, between October and December that were having planned giving campaigns. So there was a lot of full-on uh, at that time for the diocese. I mention this all because without the skills of the members of the committee, their expertise, and willing to give their time, it wouldn't happen. And so on behalf of my behalf as parish priest, and as your behalf as for our parish, I thank all the members of the parish finance committee. Betty Azarali, our chair, Julie Pierce, our secretary, Liz McCrory, Stephen Ballack, who's with us here, and Ibi Abassi, who's the chair of our pastoral council. Um, and I also am very grateful to them all for sharing their time, their advice, and their professional experience and expertise to enable the parish to raise more funds and to manage its finances proficiently and to plan appropriately for the future. And a big welcome to Laura Forrest, who's with us here. Uh, she's an accountant, and, and she has joined the committee just, just, be was it just before Christmas, or is it after, was it January? <laughs> anyway, we're very grateful to you for uh, 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 joining us and get, uh, availing this parish of your skills. We are still looking for more people to, uh, to share their skills, engineering, construction in particular, uh, as well as financial expertise. So if you know anybody who would be able to help, we'd be more than grateful to have them come along and to support the parish. A big thank you to all of you, our parishioners, who continue to support the parish financially, those of you who have increased your donation, and those who have started contributing through the standing orders, the donation portals and PayPal on the website. As a result of the planned giving and stewardship campaign, it's making a huge difference and we're seeing the impact. Geraldine Nelson, who is our, uh, works in the Ealing Abbey Trust Office, who works extremely hard throughout the year as our administrator of the parish finances for all her work uh, that she did in supporting the planned giving campaign and the forms. Um, the parish is very, very grateful to her 
her attention to detail and her diligence in all that she does. And we thank her very much. A big thank you to Sharon Daly, uh, the Ealing Abbey Trust lay bursar, and she's also a parishioner who is also on the committee, the finance committee, and prepares the finance accounts and manages uh, our parish finances also. A more detailed feedback of the planned giving campaign, together with a, a parish finance report, is planned for March 2024. And so we're hoping that will, will happen. It takes time, and a lot of people are doing other things within that. So we, we, we're very grateful to their the, the, uh, giving of their time to the parish. The focus of our planned giving and stewardship campaign was our catechesis and the emphasising the importance of having a full-time parish catechetical coordinator for Ealing Abbey Parish. And we are seeing the consequences and the benefits of having that capacity and the outreach and support skills um, to meet that need. The parish catechesis is the core of our parish evangelisation and allows us to be more efficiently to engage with and work towards meeting those ongoing areas raised through the listening sessions in the Synodal Pathway in January 2022. So, catechesis. <clears throat> Daniel will give more specific detail on that, but I just want to just get the broad outline from uh, the wider parish point of view. If you remember, just to remind you that Daniel has been our parish catechetical coordinator since September 2018, and he continues to make huge inroads and developments again, as we've seen this year. No one can deny, I hope, the huge inroads and developments that have happened uh, by, as a result of having this full-time position. Since he came in in 2018, he has done a considerable amount of work on all areas of our sacramental preparation. But our confirmation pro program in particular has had a complete overhaul, and in this September, it's widened to become a youth group, encompassing those before and after confirmation. We've recruited nearly 30 leaders and helpers to support this group. And all of, you, all of them who are attending the 12.30 p.m. Mass on Sundays can testify to the impact their presence is having on our parish as a whole. And certainly, I celebrate in that Mass and I feel it. And I, as I mentioned to the, those at the 12 p.m. Mass uh, a few weeks ago, when the, choir, when the youth group weren't there, when we started our opening hymn, we didn't have... Uh, Mary Venn, our organist there, people sang and you could feel the enthusiasm. And I put that down to the young people. So I sort of, it's quid pro quo. You work and we work for them. And it makes a huge difference. So I, I thank them for all that, Daniel in particular, for his constant reimagining and exploring of new ideas and initiatives, working with others and keeping their input and seeking their input and advice, thus inspiring and motivating others to find out about our faith and yet get involved in the life of the parish. Confirmation, First Holy Communion, and our uh, right of Christian initiation of adult programs in particular have, have great developments and restructuring as a result. <clears throat> Daniel is also involved in our baptismal preparation sessions and making that link for parents who come to have their babies or other children baptised to the 10-15 Mass here in the parish hall every Sunday, um, and then moving it on to First Holy Communion and then Confirmation. So getting that link, developing that link and moving that link that we are a community and that we are there at the, right at the beginning and through the middle stages and then after Confirmation. That, that's that big thing, what happens after Confirmation. This group in particular is evolving in that and we're very grateful to the, having leaders who support that um, in that, in, in that way. <clears throat> I also want to thank our volunteer catechists catechist, for their time and commitment and their ministry. They play a key role in supporting and guiding those who want to deepen their faith and to build their relationship with Jesus. We continue to have a great team and it's ever evolving, but there is so much more that we need to engage with and try to respond to and meet the catechetical needs. And within that, we come to safeguarding. Our parish safeguarding reps Makalita Katukoi, who is with us here, and Jim Welsh. Jim stepped down in July. Uh, where are you, Jim? He stepped down in July after five years, but with a phenomenal uh, dedication and commitment. Him, Makalita, and Maggie, who is in the parish office, that brought, continued to ensure that Ealing Abbey Parish is a safe place and a sacred place for all. And we're very grateful to Mary Elaine Collins, who has taken over the reins 
and we'll speak to you a bit later on. And I thank her very much for taking on the role. She brings with her a wealth of expertise and experience and I'm very grateful to thank her, as I am Macalita in particular, particularly in this last year and these few months of just keeping everything going. Our Power Safe Get On Committee, which meets three times a year, Monica McCarthy, who's a head teacher and parishioner, Paula Dare, another head teacher of special needs school uh, and parishioner, Marcella Phelan, who is from Ealing Social Services. She just retired there a few years ago. And together with Father Timothy and myself, uh, we make that up. They are a valuable resource of knowledge, advice and experience to our safeguarding reps and to the parish. The feedback and support that they give on any matters of concern. So it's wonderful to have them and so key to our safeguarding and where we're at. And just to remember that as a parish, we always and will continue to do so to remember in our prayers those who have been abused abused emotionally, psychologically, physically, sexually, and maybe in terms of spiritually too. We continue to commit ourselves to do our very best to support them in any way we can. We also ensure that we do everything we can as a church, a parish, and a monastic community to make Ealing Abbey safe for everyone, and most especially for children and for those who are most vulnerable. And we never stop in that mission. Our pastoral care and social outreach the parish has been without a pastoral coordinator for most of 2023, but in December we welcome Michelle de Cruz to, to took up the reins, and she will talk to you a bit about what she's been doing since that, that time. We wish her every blessing in her role. She is also a member of our parish pastoral council, and together with Father Timothy and myself. So we thank all our members of our parish pastoral council, to Ibi, the chair, Brendan Curran, the secretary, and to Stephen Ballock too. A key aim of the Parish Pastoral Council was the updating and compiling of a new parish directory. And through Stephen's commitment and hard work, the, the, the compilation of this directory uh, was made available uh, to parishioners in September. And the cost of the directory was funded by another great opportunity that Mary Nolan, a contact that she had, and they funded that so the parish wasn't burdened with that cost. A little byword. <clears throat> uh, Father Abbott was on the telephone. Was it telephone or email? Email. email to uh, his eminence, Cardinal Vincent Nichols, <clears throat> on another matter. But the, uh, the Cardinal made a point of telling Father Abbott to thank or to say congratulate all those involved with the parish directory in this printing it and putting it together. He, he went out of his way. Now, how he found out about it or what he knows was, 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 will probably be another story in itself. But again, thank you to Stephen for that and to, for making that happen. Uh, for the Cardinal to notice that, that's not a bad thing. <laughs> so, Stephen will also talk about the Social Committee. And I thank him and all members of the Social Committee in bringing parishioners and their friends and family together and developing and nurturing the social interaction of our parishioners. Our parish four meetings that took place between October and January, the numbers were low, a bit disappointing in that way, but they were core parishioners, and that was, was important, and that was key and uh, good to have. Again, we haven't quite uh, worked through um, the, what, what came up with them. Obviously, the welcome desk at the moment is going to be the first kind of sign of re, 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 re kicking that start again for the nine o'clock in particular. It's going to take a bit of time, but now that we have Shell, she can sort of take a lead in that and spearhead things that were coming from that and issues. They're, not, they're still on the back burner. The idea we will have on our website a special um, page devoted to the parish forms and information there and ways for people to get in contact um, and, and to put, post things around that. It's a work in progress, but it hasn't been forgotten. Our parish special needs group continues. It has three liturgies throughout the year. And many thanks to Philly Codrington for coordinating this. Advent, Lent, and then something in the summer. We have the, you might, there's a note been up by the Renew 5, W5, which is a safe space uh, that it began in the Baptist Church, or they have it in the Baptist Church in Haven Green. And work, when we were working with Krisha that we we're trying to start something up in the parish. Again, that's something that I really want to have that that's a weekly thing, just a safe space for people, people with mental health issues that just want to come and 
just to have a place to go to that they can feel safe and be, be with others uh, as they wish. Uh, we do need volunteers for that, so we're going to keep that still on the agenda and it's something that I really want to, to get up and running as soon as we can. <clears throat> In our sacristy this year, again, another turbulent layer. In March, Rafid Golby stepped into the role as sacristan until November, while Kumar, our sacristan, was sick. And I'm very grateful to all his hard work and the contribution that he made in the sacristy over these months. And we have great thanks, too, for the return to full health of Kumar, our sacristan, after a very, very serious um, uh, uh, accident. Uh, he came back and he's in good health, so it's great to have him back since, since November. A real, true miracle. And you will see him back in the church. Our administration and maintenance, Radek Milek is our Abbey Trust States Manager, uh, and we have a new site caretaker, uh, Hubert, um, who just started in December. Uh, and, but he, has the, he was sort of around doing uh, bank sort of work before that, so he had the thing. So in that, in terms of what's been happening, the refurbishment of the front office, uh, which used to be Krish's office, uh, uh, that, that happened uh, during the year. And so anybody who has visited can agree, and I hope you agree, that what a wonderful space it is. And we use that now as a meeting space for parishioners uh, who are coming in here. And so a wonderful job has been done that. Uh, and it is a lovely room with the, with the bay window. The coffee shop got a new coat of paint in August. Uh, and thanks to the money raised by our parish golf day, again to Mary and Eileen for the Trojan work that they did uh, in Ealing Golf Club in that golf day for the second year in a row, raising over £7,000. That's going to be used to do further refurbishment of the coffee shop, and the planning is in progress with, with, with Radical around that. The idea is to make it a more sociable, warm, and welcoming space, and kind of a, a multi-purpose, because we have the over 60s there on a Tuesday, the key group, and for our young people as well, for them to, to have that space to, to, to use as well. The lights in the church are being reviewed at the moment, and the, particularly the switch box in the, in the sacristy um, needs updating and renew. The company that used to do it have gone, gone, gone out of business, so it's a whole restructuring. And again, the same with all of these things is to do, think of the bigger picture, the wider picture, so that we're not spending money where we are doubling up where we need to. But that's on the agenda. Our parish website. Uh, constantly needs updating and reworking and adjusting to make sure that people can access the information they need and quickly and to be making it, use it as a place where people can and will go to for information. And we're very grateful to Daniel for all the work that he's done. He did a revamp there a few months ago and, and it's been a great assistance to that. Uh, it has been a key tool for our catechesis for confirmation and um, uh, First Holy Communion in particular, and it's been really worthwhile in using it. In December, we had 1,800 people log onto the website, so that's a great number. Live streaming, as we got to since September 2020, is working well and allowing the Abbey to reach out beyond the parish and also to keep connected with those who are housebound. In this way, we have moved forward dramatically and ultimately caught up, but it's again there to stay. The e-newsletter... Uh, the company that we initially set it up with offered, at the beginning, a free lifetime service when they were sizing up. <laughs> ah, yes, everybody laughed. Yes, because yes, then suddenly we got an email, by the way, if your subscribers go over the 500 number mark, there will be a charge of, oh, I think it was £280 or something like that, a year. So we suspended it for a while because, that, again, that's another extra charge for the parish to hold out on top of the live streaming chart, which comes to £110 a month. But we've been very lucky that somebody has uh, donated that £280 to cover that for the next year. So again, we have Shell. Again, we sort of think that with the last year we've been relied, and she's working on getting that happen. Before the Eastnet newsletter, used to, Daniel used to do that. Uh, but again, it's very, it is time consuming to do it every week and to make sure that it's out and ready for that thing. Um, so it is a work in progress and it, it is evolving. It's a, good, um, it's a good mechanism to reaching out to other people 
uh, and even if people don't necessarily read it, they do click on it. They, they, in terms of your feedback and statistics, you can get around that. So it's happening, but we, again, we're dependent on people supporting or being able to support that £280 charge a year. Our donation portals um, are working well when they work. We're continually having problems with it. We had squirrels eating at the reckless, so we had to repair that on the outside now. And this week, there seems to be another problems with the, the cabling outside, and Radix looking into that again. But on the whole, they've made a huge difference in terms of people co uh, contributing to the parish and using that as a means of supporting the parish. So it's great to have that, and we're very grateful. As I mentioned as before, that Father Timothy and myself are the only two full-time monks on the parish team. However, I'm very grateful for the support given to us by the parish, by Abba Dominic here, as, uh, as he says, his Mass every Sunday, uh, and Father Peter, who looks after the family Mass, uh, and Abbot Martin, and also support us with funerals uh, and other activities that to help we have, and visiting the sick. We're very lucky to have two deacons, Deacon Ian and Deacon Alex. Deacon Neil would talk about a bit more in detail about their role, but uh, they help us with our readers, Eucharistic ministers, uh, and our catechesis, Ian is with First Holy Communion, uh, and our baptisms. And uh, Deacon Alex has taken over from Deacon Gordon on the, the night shelter, which has happened the, the last six, five Fridays, and next Friday is the last Friday. <clears throat> and um, a lot of people will have been cooking food, and they've been staying uh, and being around to that uh, throughout the day and in the morning. The key thing is overnight. Um, and Alex has had to do um, all of the six Fridays overnight. So it's, it's sort of something that we do need uh, extra support, the overnight shift uh, around that and support so that he's not. But we're very grateful. For, it, there is a lot of uh, practical works around that and practical organizing. Um, so, but it's, it's great that we have that. And there, it's lovely, I must say, uh, it, it is good to be there and to listen to their stories and what they're experiencing. And Abbot Francis, um, whose anniversary, second anniversary is coming up in March, it was one of the things that he loved and made a point of every Friday at, what was it, half eight in, in the evening, going and sitting with them and listening. And he loved that. And it always reminds me of, of him when I go. Um, so it's part of who we are, and it's an important uh, part of our outreach and ministry. Our liturgies. Um, specifically, we have a liturgy in November for the families and friends of deceased prisoners who have died throughout the year. We've limited to that just to make sure that core, because otherwise we'd have too many people and then catering becomes uh, an issue, et cetera, et cetera. But it's a good moment, I think, to, to let families uh, of the deceased parishioners know that the, the parish cares about them and that we are in constant uh, linking with them and praying for them. Um, uh, and it, it, it is a moment, it's good to, to reconnect with them. Again, more and more we're finding with funerals, when people come saying funeral mass, that's the first time they've been in a church for a long time. They don't know the responses. They don't know how to behave in a church, how to be in it. And that's the reality. And it becomes a moment for evangelization. It becomes a moment um, that you need to connect with them. And this is the follow-up from that in terms of their awareness that the church is out there and that the church, the, the, their, their deceased relatives were part of a community uh, and they, that meant a lot to them because a lot of them do and the family don't necessarily have that awareness of the importance of the community, the parish community to them, to the, their loved ones. And this is a way of reconnecting with that and ensuring that happen and just to, to broaden them. We had a lot of parishioners this last November who uh, Isabel Glover was a particular one. Uh, we had sister, um, uh, Marion, and others. So a lot of other parishioners were experienced it. And I'll just give you one example of a, somebody. I got a sick call on the phone um, back in September. She was an Irish. She was in her mid-40s and cancer. Uh, only been diagnosed the uh, previous, previous January, I think it was. Um, and I anointed her on the Wednesday, and she died on the, that night. Um, I, got, I got the contact number of her sister, and anyway, for the November liturgy, a whole load of her friends, who were Baptists, I think, and other denominations, who weren't able to make the funeral in Ireland, came here. And there's about 10 of them together with her family. 
And it was quite just interesting to meet them and to interact with them. And again, for them to come to the Abbey, experience what the Abbey is like, and also brings out that changing the narrative of what Ealing Abbey has been known or infamous for over so long and is still there. But so it's a good moment and it's an important moment. And I thank Fab, Fab uh, Boscarelli uh, and Robert Brown and Elizabeth Wareham in helping prepare for the liturgy uh, and to make it a really good ex spiritual experience for all involved. We do have a mass every November for all parishioners who have died. And I want that to continue to be particularly on a Tuesday at the 6 p.m. mass. Not much left, but I think these, these are all kind of, they're all the, the routine things that we're doing, but it's also just to make aware that the, 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 a lot of work goes into them and we need people to, to support that. Our liturgy for those affected by suicide. We had that on the, the night before uh, Ascension Thursday, on Wednesday the 17th of May. Our first one was in April 2019. Um, and so then we've, this is going to be, so we've had three so far, and then we will have one this year. Uh, again, I think the 7th of May is the, the but just before uh, struggling. Again, we have committed ourselves as a parish to keep trying to support in the best way we can those who are struggling with their mental health. And to reiterate uh, what I said again last year, that those directly affected by suicide, by a, if be it a close relative or friend, the pain is so often excruciating and doesn't go away. And for so many, even after the years, 30 years, whatever it is, the decision to attend the liturgy is still agonizing. And therefore, I appeal again to all parishioners who haven't had direct experience or personal knowledge to come to this liturgy as a way of our parish community helping to carry their cross, their pain, their suffering, and to those who have taken their own lives. This did happen in May, even though it was a, a small number, it was, we had a number of real regular parishioners and I think that's a really good base and a good start to have because it does make it a community event. It does make it a, it's something that we are in this together and we're here and we care about those um, who have been affected and that support. And that's, a, again, another good and important message for those outside to hear and to be aware of. And so I thank all of those who did come to, to that, the liturgy in May. And I just ask you to if any more money more can come to make it that 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 great prayer and spiritual connection with all those we have our pentecost vigil mass which happens at the 6 p.m another moment where we have the different languages uh, of, of of our parish and we keep on evolving in that and we're hoping this time also to make a reception afterwards of different the cuisines of the different nations that are make up our parish um, as well in terms of that um, our novena in preparation for the feast of St. Benedict, the patron of Europe. We had it last year for the first time, and we, again, we're going to have it this year to just develop and make our awareness of uh, <clears throat> we are a Benedictine parish and the best way to be that and to inform ourselves and keep evolving in that way. We have a great team, and it is ever evolving. But as always, there is so much that needs to be done, to be engaged with, and to try to swear to this meet uh, needs is, is very important for us. There's a lot to be thankful for and to be inspired by, by the courage of the Holy Spirit to move forward <coughs> and to bring the message of the gospel to more people. We have come a long way with a lot of help from, and a lot of support from so many people, both parishioners and friends of Ealing Abbey. Our continued strength is a tribute to the parish community that exists, you here coming, making the effort on a th Sunday afternoon to be here and to be interested and, and wanting to know what's going on and for your involvement. So I thank you all very much. So many of you, <coughs> sorry, uh, for your, all your hard work that you do to support the Catholic life of Ealing uh, and to make it alive and blossomy. Uh, may God keep you safe and thank you for all that you do.